Hi, this is Linda Green with a video about surface area from section 10.2. Our goal for this section is to derive a formula for the surface area of a surface of revolution. By approximating that surface of revolution with little bands that are pieces of cones, pieces of circular cones. So we're going to need a formula for the area of a piece of cone. And this formula is that the area of this blue shaded piece of a cone is given by 2 pi r times l, where r is the average radius halfway in between the radius at the smaller end and the radius at the bigger end of this piece of cone. And l is the distance shown here, the slant height of this piece of cone. There's a derivation of this formula in section 8.2 of the textbook, or you can watch a short video that I'll make to derive the formula if you're interested. But the formula should seem plausible because 2 pi r is giving you the circumference, the average circumference, and L is giving you this distance, this slant height. We're multiplying this average circumference by the slant height. This formula bears a strong resemblance to the formula for the area of a cylinder as well. Now let's use this formula to derive a formula for the surface area of a surface of revolution where we're rotating around the x-axis. I'm going to assume our curve here, drawn at the top, is given by the parametric equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t, where t ranges from a to b. By approximating small pieces of my surface with small pieces of cones, I can see that the surface area is approximately the sum of the areas of these pieces of cones, where I'm assuming I have n small pieces of cones in my approximation. Using the formula we just mentioned, we can rewrite this as the sum from i equals 1 to n of 2 pi r i l i, where r i is the average radius of my smallest piece of cone. In other words, the radius at the midpoint of the ith interval, and Li is the length of a line segment approximating the ith piece of curve. Well, since my radius here is just the height of my curve, or the y value of my curve, I can rewrite this as 2 pi times my y value, which is g of t, let's call it g of t i star for some point t i star in the ith interval. So that's my radius. And then my li, my length of my line segment, like when we derived the arc length formula, that straight line segment has a length given by f prime of ti star squared plus g prime of ti star squared dt. 
for some TI star in the ith time interval. Okay. As usual, we can find the exact surface area by taking the limit as n goes to infinity. Sorry, this is supposed to be a delta t here. In the limit, it becomes dt. And the limit over the Riemann sum is going to be the integral from t equals a to t equals b of 2 pi g of t f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared dt. Usually this is written as the integral from a to b of 2 pi y square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. And that's our formula for surface area if we're rotating around the x-axis. Now if we wanted to rotate instead around the y-axis, the only thing that will change in this formula is that my radius here is going to be coming from my x value instead of my y value. So if I want to rotate around the y axis, I still go from t equals a to t equals b and I just calculate 2 pi x times the same little incremental bit of arc length. So my intuition here is that I'm integrating circumference times a little piece of arc length and integrating that. So let's use one of these formulas to prove that the surface area of a sphere is given by the formula 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of the sphere. So I need to write this sphere as a surface of revolution. So I can rotate around the x-axis this curve here. I need to put this curve in parametric equations, which can be given by x equals r cosine t and y equals r sine of t. And my t is going to range from 0 to pi. So when I rotate this around the x-axis, I get what's supposed to look like a sphere. All right, so I want to use my formula. Integral from here, it's from 0 to pi of 2 pi y, the radius, times a little piece of arc length. My dx dt is just negative r sine t, and my dy dt is r cosine t. So that gives me 2 pi times y, which is r sine t, times the square root of negative r sine t squared plus r cosine t squared dt. Simplifying, I have the square root of r squared sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt. This is just 1. And so I get the integral from 0 to pi of 2 pi r sine t, square root of r squared is r, d 
dt, which is the integral of 2 pi r squared sine t dt. If I pull out the 2 pi r squared and integrate sine t, I get negative cosine t. Evaluate between pi and 0, I end up with 2 pi r squared times negative cosine pi plus cosine 0, which gives me 4 pi r squared as wanted. That's all for the video on surface area. See you in class.